Hi, I'm Steve from Instrument Systems and I'm going to attempt to show you the murky world of SDI-12. Now we're going to explore SDI-12 debugging in a little bit more depth. Uh, what we have here is we have three different interfaces provided by NEWA that you can use for communications directly to an SDI-12 sensor. So you don't need, don't need the logger connected or anything. Uh, these two here connect using USB and they uh, sharp as a, US, as a USB serial port. This one here is a Bluetooth variant which is used for talking with laptops with Bluetooth or with Android smartphones. Now unfortunately there's a little bit of confusion as to which ones will work to, to do what. This one here is the original version that was made some years ago and unfortunately this version does not support some sensors and especially uh, green screen sensors, you can't read them with this. Following on from this one was the next version, which is actually using a third party board which we purchased from elsewhere. This one will successfully read pretty much every sensor that we have. However, you can't do a snoop, and a snoop is where we are looking at the communications coming directly from the sensor to the logger. This final variation does do everything that we want it to do, but unfortunately you need a Bluetooth capable device, which is usually a laptop or a smartphone. Okay, so now we're going to demonstrate just quickly how to wire up an STI-12 sensor for diagnostics. This is a pretty typical STI-12 sensor, we've just got the three wires, we've got power, ground and data. Now of course every sensor is going to be a little bit different, so you have to check the manufacturer just to see um, what connection goes to what. So if we use the, the Bluetooth adapter, which we can use with an Android smartphone or tablet, this is pretty easy to connect to because we've got a built-in 12 volts, an SDI and ground all labelled there. So it's just a case of wiring in your 12 volts. And now you'll be able to monitor that sensor with our SDI 12 diagnostics. For this type of interface, it's a little bit different because there's no built-in 12 volt power supply. So what you'll need is some 12 volt source, it could be a battery or power supply of some description, and our interface. And what you need to do is you need to take the, the ground wire for your SDI-12. That goes into the ground of your power supply. And that one also goes into the ground for your sensor. So all the grounds are all connected up. Now the 12 volts from your power supply will need to go to the 12 volts on your sensor. And your SDI-12 data, that needs to go to the SDI-12 interface here. Okay, so when it's all connected up, what we'll have is we'll have our 12 volts from the battery. We'll go across to the 12 volts for the sensor. The ground or negative for the battery goes to the ground of the sensor and also to the ground of the SDI interface. And the SDI-12 data from the SDI-12 interface goes to the data connection on the sensor. So what I'll do is I'll demonstrate how to use one of these. The operation through the software, which is NEWA provided software, is identical for all three devices. So it doesn't really matter which one I show it to you with. Now the program is called the NEWA SDI-12 Explorer and the first thing that you need to do is you need to set the COM port that you know it is on. So up here we have a drop down list of COM ports. If you drop that down it actually gives you a descriptive list of all the ones that are found on the PC. Now quite often you don't know which ones are on the PC, which ones are which, because you can have dozens and dozens of them. A simple way is to disconnect it, look on the list, Reconnect it, look on the list, and I can see that there's now a new COM port here called COM port 12. So I know that this one is definitely on COM port 12, so I'll select that. The next thing that you need to do is you need to tell it what type of interface you're talking to. If you go up to the file menu, there's a list of options here. We've got the newer original mode here. There's two options for this type, depending on the firmware revision and then there's uh, the newer Bluetooth options as well. Now if you are unsure, there is a query interface type. So we'll try that. 
Okay, so it's, it's guessed that it is the newer interface one, which is, in this, is just correct. Now, operation of the software is identical, independent of whatever type of interface you use. So the first thing you might want to do is search for any sensors. So what we'll do is we'll, I'll click up here, search for sensors. And just like through Starlog, it's going to go through all addresses from 0 to, to 9 to see if there's anything attached. Now we'll see that it's found a sensor at address 0. Now a point to mention is that it says that it's found something on 7. But what's actually happening is this is connected to the sensor at the same time that we're trying to scan what's on the bus. So what's actually happened is at the point where it was reading 7, the logger tried to do a reading at the same time. And to stop that effect, what you can do is you can disconnect the logger out of the circuit, which means that you're just going to be talking to the sensors themselves. If two devices try to talk to the sensor at the same time, then you just get a confusion in the communication. Okay, so it's found the climber that we're looking for on address 0. I can select it here, and again I can go read data. Now this one very nicely times it for you and brings out the results here. So again we can see that it has returned the four channels with sensible data. So from that we can say that the logger, that the sensor itself is working correctly and it's all powered up. Now from this window it actually gives you a few more options for configuring your sensors. Uh, probably a very useful one is set address. Each SDI-12 sensor has to be allocated a unique address. Uh, the usual addresses are between 0 or 9, but for some other systems it can go up through A to Z as well. If you're trying to work out which sensors are connected to this, um, what address they are, it's probably best to isolate them all so that you're only reading one of them at a time. So from here, for example, I can go, I'm on address 0, I can go new address, address 1, change, So it's executed the command and it's redoing a search and it's found it now at address 1, which is exactly like we'd expect. Right, now the next tab along is the custom commands. Some sensors can be configured using a special set of extended commands. These commands are unique to the sensor you're talking to. Not all sensors will support it and it's up to the manufacturer to provide the format for them. If you need to produce any configuration commands for your sensor, then you can simply enter them in here. For example, I could do a 0m send. And it's responded with the raw data, which is um, I'm going to return four values in one second. This automatically capitalizes it for you, because most sensors expect it in capital letters. And it automatically appends an exclamation mark, which is your equivalent of pressing enter or accept. The data snoop is for diagnosing problems between the logger and the sensor. What we're going to do is we're going to look at the communications between the logger and the sensor by connecting this interface in parallel to the SDI-12 bus. Now that just requires the ground and the SDI data lines to be connected to the ground and SDI data lines of the sensor themselves. What we should see is all the communications between the logger and the sensor and from here you can determine if the logger is sending any commands, if the sensor is responding to commands or if maybe the sensor is on the wrong address. So every time the logger sends a command you see it uh, logged in this window here. For example, I can see here that it's issued a measure command, the sensor has responded, and then the logger has sent the data command, and the sensor has responded. So I can see here right away that the logger and the sensor are talking correctly. Now the use of SDI data snoop does mean you do need to know some of the raw commands for SDI 12. The most basic one are the measure command, which is M, and the other one is a data command, which is D. So the logger has sent 0 for address 0, M for measure, exclamation mark to say execute this command. Then the logger has sent a 0 for the sensor number, D0, exclamation mark, to get the first set of data for that sensor, which is responded with there. 
So that is STL12 Snoop. You can save it to a log file if you want to for further investigation. Uh, but it is a very, very useful tool for working out what's going on in the system. I'm going to quickly demonstrate the operation of this newer revision SDI interface. With this interface, as a key point, was that it doesn't support Snoop. So there's a problem with that. But the operation for that is identical to this one here. So I'll start the SDI Explorer again. Now again we have to work out what COM port it's on. So we can just disconnect it. See what disappears. Reconnect it. See what reappears. Okay, and it's, again it's on COM port 12 in this case. And this time we need to set the interface type to Vegitronics V2. Vegitronics being the maker of the board on the inside. Again, if required, we can query interface type and it's come up with the correct type uh, revision to mo no multi on support. Okay. Uh, exactly the same to the original interface. We can search for sensors. And you can see that again it has found the sensor on address 0, like we'd expect. I can select that sensor and go read. And again, it's returned the data exactly like we'd expect there. Now, in addition to that, you can still set address. I can change it to address 1. And I can see here that it has now found that same sensor is now on address 1. And as before, I can still enter custom commands. I can see here that I've correctly set the address back to address 0. But data snoop is unreliable and can't be used for diagnostic purposes.